Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I thank Yanko to leave me five minutes to present my... <laughs> I will speak very fast. So, welcome and thank you to join me for the paper on the use of uh, RFID seals for enhanced terminal operations and security. My name is Alex Leclay, I'm the Managing Director of Lekhorn Perfra and also the International Sales Director of Lekhorn. Lekhorn is a top five manufacturer of security seals and uh, tapping prevention systems. But what is more important to know is that Lekhorn, for the last 10 years, has spent a lot of research and development in how to implement RFID, radio frequency, into security seals. The presentation itself is in two parts. The first part is I'm going to give you some explanation about an RFID installation for a terminal. And in the second part, I will give you some more information on the unique aspects of e-seals. First, some pictures. These are pictures taken at Antwerp Gateway, DP World Antwerp. You see the queuing. This is one of the problems for terminals. Then we have a checker. A checker is a very nice person, a nice person to have a beer with, but he's also, he costs a lot of money, and he's a human, which means human errors can occur. <laughs> human errors especially can occur when registering the seal number. For instance, this is an, uh, just an example. The seal number on top <coughs> left is not the same as on the manifest down. Now, Normally, you will have no problems with this unless there is a problem when there is a theft out of the container. There is a, stati a statistic that 25% of error, uh, human errors occur when registering the CL number. In fact, I think these uh, statistics, the average is much higher than 25%. This is not a very clear uh, picture, but it is a very an important problem uh, with tampering. And this is the duplication of security seals. I put there China production, unfortunately, because uh, the word exclusivity in China has not the same uh, impact as in Europe, meaning that a lot of security seals are copied. Everyone can buy a security seal in China with the same logo, with the same customs number. So it's a possibility that ship, and it, it happens a lot, that shippers have thefts out of container without that they can find an evidence. And this is purely due to duplication of seals. So what are the desired gains in a nutshell for terminal operators? First of all, of course, they want to enhance, optimize their operations, task path, the truck appointment system. They want to optimize the security, especially on the use of security seals. Reduce, reduce or minimize claims. They want to have a reliable system at a low cost. Save on uh, labor cost, uh, for instance, with a checker. And, uh, and as this as a result, they have a very fast return on investment. They are or become a more innovative terminal. Create an added value, and which is most important, the pricing has to be very accessible for all parties. So the first, uh, stage is here the installation that we did at uh, Antwerp Gateway DP World. These are the antennas that we placed, as, that we placed at the uh, inspection lanes at DP. Some specific features, the housing is IP65 to withstand any environmental conditions. Inside are two antennas and one reader, so it can read the seals on the front of the container and the e-seals on the back of the container. And we have also photocell sensors. Some general specifications. It's an all-in-one system with the 18,000CC global system. And it can monitor the movement of any kind of e-seal. So not only our e-seals, but any kind of e-seals, which of course are produced under the uh, universal standards. So it's not a black box solution. It can identify the individual lanes. This is very important because, like in uh, DP, the lanes are very close to each other. It's only one meter between each lane. 
So we had to develop a very specific firmware with a lot of filters that one blade would not be covered by another antenna. So technical specifications, it has to be quick and easy setup, compatible with all systems worldwide, of course. There is a specific advanced detection algorithm and late detection firmware, as I explained, to cover that it will not reach any kind of seal on the other lanes. Fault tolerance management, an auto setting, and a special filter we had to put in order to avoid other RFID tags, uh, that it will only read e-seals, because we had a situation at DP that also a truck driver had a dog inside his cabin, which was chipped, and the, dog, the chip on the dog was red. So we had to, to fill it. And of course there is a protection also IP65. Just one slide on the case study that we did, the installation of DP World Belgium. In 2010 we got a concrete demand from DP that they wanted to start to look for a solution to use e-seals with fast lane application. Between 2010 and 2012, we had a lot of meetings with DP, as with, as with uh, several federations, transport federations, shippers, what they all expect from the SEALs. And in July 2012, we had to do the proof of concept at uh, DP. We did the proof of concept at, uh, at the OCR, at the gate in, two-lane testing. Uh, there under is a picture of it. We tested all possible scenarios, meaning uh, e-seals on any kind of uh, um, position on the container, two containers, two lanes, and we did a 100% successful POC. As a result, in August 2012, DP ordered five stations, two for the gate in OCR and three for the inspection lanes. And the weekend of the 8th, 10th December, we installed the DP during three days. At two days we finished the installation, one day we remained there for testing all uh, the installation uh, as well as the system with them. As a result for DP, because they successfully introduced the e-seals together with their truck appointment system, they optimized the truck flow, also the OCR. Now the trucks who are carrying an e-seal, they don't have to stop anymore for a physical inspection by a checker, but they can drive directly to the inter-truck chain zone via the fast lanes. Very important, there are no more human errors in entering the seal number, not by the checker, but also not by the trucker because the trucker also has to get out of the truck and uh, enter the number on the PC. No more queuing, of course. And in the future, when there will be antennas placed also in the key cranes, it's a possibility that uh, the operations will be possible during night shifts or shift transitions. In all, the commercial and economical pros for terminals in general of course, save on labor costs because they don't need a checker. No more physical inspection, minimize claims, innovative, fast and easy setup, very accessible price setting, and you can use the system for a lot more advantages in the future, like an uh, authorized economic operator, any kind of situation. The second part uh, is not an episode of startup, <coughs> but it's, it's also not uh, sci fi. Because a lot of people think e-seals, that it's complicated, but in fact RFID exists since a very long time and the only thing we did is, is put the logistic, the logic information that RFID a solution gives, we insert it into a, an e-seal. So this is the RFID neutral seal. It's a high security UHF passive bolt seal. It's a normal bolt seal with a big flag, which inside is the antenna. It can be put on any kind of uh, location of the container. <coughs> Some specs, of course it has to be ISO 17712-2010 certified. In March it will be 2013 certified. Some uh, main RFID specifications that you can read. What is important to know is that the reading distance by the station, like at uh, DP Road, is around 8 meters. If you have a handheld gun, also 5 meters. If you can, with a PDA, with an Android PDA for instance, it will be 30 centimeters. We have two versions. We have the logistic e-seal and the anti-temper uh, e-seal. 
the anti temper we receive a lot more demands because it has some very unique features that I will show on the next slide. And a very accessible end user price. Depending on the, the version, the logistic will cost around a little bit less than one euro. Anti temper will be around 140, 150. This price we, we kept it very low in order that a lot of companies, shippers, transport companies will start to use the ECS. Now this is the anti-temper version and this is a very specific version because we put the antenna also inside the metal pin to the capsule and if a seal would be cut and re-glued together normally if you cut a passive seal, the seal is dead but this antenna is so specifically designed for us that it still leaves enough energy to inform you or the terminal or the end user that the seal has been tampered with. Like that you can see on the, the picture of the, the handheld, status OK, status temper. This module we also built already in the, inside the station at DP. So if a truck would come in with a container sealed with an issue which is tampered, there is a procedure in the container will not come. It's very important for the terminal to reduce the weight. Some unique possibilities that people need to know about using an EC. You have a read write tag of 120 <coughs> bits, and in the future we can enlarge the, 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 the bits. We program the seal number into the EPC memory, but then you have also get the tag identification, and we combine the seal number with the TID number. This combination we we lock in our database and anyone who uses e-seals of terminal or they have a question about the uniqueness of the seal, they can consult our database so they will be informed it's a unique seal. After, after that, the user, the shipper or transport company, they can write additional information onto the tag, like the container number, which we can encrypt on the demand of the client. He can add important information about dangerous goods. You can add the movement reference number from customs and the EDI or electronic data interchange notification from the terminal. All this when programmed by an Android PDA. The Android PDA has a GPS GPRS inside. So you can really define where has the seal been put on, is the status okay, is it been tempered and these, these, these are unique possibilities to use uh, an RFID passive seal. We are now in fully development of an active seal as well, which is the mental seal, and normally it will be operational in April, March, March, April next year. You can read the specifications down there. Reading distance will be 12 meters. Also with the handheld, it will be 12 meters, and it has, of course, uh, because it's an active seal, it has a real time clock system inside. This time clock it, it is, is able to register the, the, the moment when the seal is closed, the moment when the seal will be tampered, and the moment that the, when you open the seal. So you can lock all the events with the e-seal, and there is also a specific feature, is the unique association between the pin and the bolt. So when we're talking about seals, who are the main parties who, buy, who have to buy the seals? It's of course the shippers. For them, the, the commercial economical pros, very accessible price setting because we kept the price very low versus a normal bolt seal. They can have no more errors in entering the seal number, less claims, the proof of tampering with the anti tamper version. You can have enhanced logistic operations with the authorized economic operator and customs in EDI. And of course, the possibility to write additional information onto the seal. They can, have, they can do better contract negotiation with their truck transport companies, because of course the truck transport companies lose much less time when they go to, to deliver the container to the, the terminal. And you have, of course, the proof of liability tampering during crossings. For the transport companies, it's a bit the same. Of course, they don't, they don't lose less time when they use the fast lanes using an uh, using, uh, using an easel, sorry. No more errors, because the truck drivers also make errors when entering the seal. The price setting, they create an added value for their customers. And 
for the future, the possible operations during meal breaks, what I talked to you about a couple of slides ago. So, the future with the use of RFID seals, it's uh, unlimited. You can have a geofence scenario. Uh, if you would uh, have a reader antenna placed at the gate in, in the crane and the gate out, the handheld uh, operated by the shipper and the receiver, then you can have with a passive seal a possible track and trace for a, with, for a system which costs less than one euro. We also already developed an app that uh, if the terminals share the EDI information with the shippers, that the shippers on the shipping line would receive on their PDA or laptop or whatever, uh, the message when the container would be arrived on the terminal, entered on the vessel, unloaded, and, and etc. And of course, uh, customs are very interested, paperless customs, <coughs> procedures, I.O. Conclusion. RFID gate solution is a proven solution because we installed it already now one year ago at uh, DP uh, Belgium without one, one single problem. It's a low-cost investment and a very fast return on investment. And in combination with the use of the e-seals or RFID seals, active or passive, at the same level of accessible cost, will enhance immediately the economical and commercial activities of the terminal versus all the other parties. But in fact, to summarize, to summarize all, uh, there is a quote from Ash uh, Mr. Rashid Baho, who is a Director of Container Operationals at DP World. And he says that RFID seals is probably the ultimate solution on many discussions regarding seal checking and enhanced terminal operations, but only will become a real success when all terminal operators join hands by introducing this technology. Then there is the one million dollar question. How can you win one hour by spending one euro? Less than one euro? It's the blue truck driver. He has an easy. seal While the rest is all queuing for the manual check, he has an easy, seal and he can pass through the gates in five minutes. Thank you very much for joining the presentation. If you have any more questions whatsoever, we have our stand. If you need technical information on seals, what, what could be realizable for your terminal or any kind, please feel free to join us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alex. Um,